Fitzgerald and Pat Crowley in Welcome Stranger. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. As our fellow citizens take to the open road this summer, they will be greeted in every town and village along the way with the friendly words, Welcome Stranger. But in tonight's whimsical comedy, our young doctor discovers he is anything but welcome in the small community he has been invited to join. And we have a wonderful trio of stars in this enchanting Paramount screen here. Cary Grant, Barry Fitzgerald, and Pat Crowley. Now, Act One of Welcome Strangers, starring Cary Grant as Dr. Jim Pearson, Barry Fitzgerald as Dr. McRory, and Pat Crowley as Trudy Mason. <laughs> This is Boston, the office of the Physicians and Surgeons Placement Bureau. The manager is on the telephone. That's right, Dr. Pearson. Everything's confirmed and Dr. McGrory is expecting you. Fine, fine. Now, it's rather a small town, you know, and you'll be there for two months. Splendid. Thank you, Dr. Pearson, and good luck. Uh... All right, Miss Brady, send in the next one. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. McCrory from Fallbridge. We've been having some correspondence about the physician to take me place. Well, this is quite a coincidence. I've just been speaking with him. Oh, have you now? Well, now, as I told you, I'd like a mature man of substance and experience. I'd be gone for two months, you understand. My first vacation in 30 years. You don't have to worry, Dr. McCrory. It's all been settled. Fine, fine. Why can I see him? As soon as you get back to Fallbridge, he's leaving right away. Right away? Mickey, sir, do you suppose for a moment that I'd taste the health of the community in the hands of a man I'd never set eyes on? What do you suppose he came to Boston for? There's no need for concern, Doctor. We send out only qualified physicians. Besides, your letter was a definite authorization. Uh, binding, you mean? Exactly. Oh, well, let's hope the man knows his business. What's his name? Pearson. James Pearson. Now, if you care to look at his... No, 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 I've I barely time to catch me train. Thank you for your trouble. Pearson, huh? Jim Pearson. Have a good vacation, Doctor. Yes, I will, I will. Go on fishing, you know. Is everything all right, Dr. Pearson? Mm. Oh, yes, thanks. Everything's fine, Porter. Which way is the club car? I thought I'd smoke my pipe and read the newspaper. <laughs> then you better smoke in the men's washroom, Doctor. That's all the club car we got. Oh, well, thanks. Good evening, gentlemen. I hope you don't mind if I push in here. Sorry, young man. That doesn't seem to be any room. Oh, no. I think I can squeeze in here, don't you? Now, if you could just move over a little bit. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. I... Oh, what's this? What's this? Young man. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sit on your package. I suppose you paid for a ticket and you're entitled to sit down, but you're not entitled to sit on my packages and read me newspaper. What, do you mean this newspaper? If you don't mind. Well, you're welcome to any part of it, but it just happens that I am the legal owner of this pillar of truth. Oh, are you now? I bought that paper in the station. Mm -hmm. Which section of it would you like? I'm offering you part of my paper. You can have the back part. Here, I'll let you have the front part. Indeed. Well, I'm not thanking you because you're doing me no favor. It's my... Your newspaper. Yes. And I'm giving it to you. One of these days, these young men you discovered that being stubborn will get you very little thank... Excuse me. Now, could that be your newspaper? The one you're sitting on? Huh? No. Who put it there? <laughs> now, what were you saying about being stubborn? Well, thank you to let me read the newspaper in peace. Fine. You read my paper, and I'll read yours. Good morning, sir. Sorry, but... Dining car won't be open for another five minutes. Well, I'm not quite ready for me breakfast anyway. Tell me, Stuart, would it be possible to order while I go in and shave? Uh, you have a dish in this train that I'm very partial to. Broiled brook trout with butter and lemon sauce. It'll be waiting for you, sir. Say, 15 minutes at table five. Brook trout. Fine, fine. Oh, it's a beautiful dish. A lovely, lovely dish. Sitting here, waiter. Table five, sit right down, sir. The broiled brook trout for you, sir. Brook trout, huh? Well, it sounds pretty good. You pushing the trout this morning? Oh, no, sir. This is the very last order. Well, bring it in. Bring it in. Good morning, sir. This table five. Right here, sir. 
The order's been taken. Broiled brook toast with butter and lemon sauce. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. They told me number five, and when this gentleman sat here, I... Ah, uh, it's you again. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid it is. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm also afraid I've been devouring your trout. Well, oh, thank you not to talk to me. Wait, you bring me another trout. I'm sorry, sir, but there aren't any more. What, no more trout? No, sir. If you don't mind finishing this, I've really only made a small dent in it. <laughs> Go on, take it. Wait, uh, you may bring me some oatmeal. Young man, you must bear me a terrible, vicious hate. For me? Oh, I don't hate anyone. Well, I do. I hate bladder scrapes. I detest and abominate them. Please, heaven, I'll soon be home and free of your unwelcome presence forever. Now, if there is there anything else of mine that you you cover? Oh, come now. Be reasonable. Ah, the back of me hand. <laughs> To top everything else, Mrs. Gilly, that ill-bred, vulgar upstart eats me throat. Oh, I'm glad to be home. Mrs. Gilly, are you sure there's been no message from that Dr. Pearson? Dr. McGrory, for goodness sake, I told you a dozen times, no, no message. Yeah, yeah, I see, you see, you see. Here, the door, the door, the door, Mrs. Gilly. That could be Dr. Pearson now. Send him in, Mrs. Gilly, I'll be in the office. How do you do? I'm Dr. Pearson. Oh, come in, Doctor. Come right in. Are uh, you Mrs. McCrory? Oh, heaven forbid. It's not that I do is cooking and tidying. He's here, Doctor. It's Dr. Pearson. Fine, fine. Bring him in. Uh, just down the hall. Well, 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 this is a pleasure. I'll be... <laughs> no, it can't be. Yep. It, it's not possible. I can't believe it. Me either. They, they tell me there's about 200,000 physicians in the country, and... Uh, and you got me. <clears throat> now, to begin with, Doctor, you know, actually, that was my newspaper. Young man, do you try to be objectionable? Do, do, do you work at it? <laughs> well, I'm not trying. I can tell you this. If I'd seen you in Boston, I wouldn't be seeing you now. Here, sit down, sit down. Let me have your, your credentials. I've got them right here, Doctor. Hmm. I know of no Drake Hospital in Boston. Uh, the Drake's not a hospital, Doctor. It's a hotel. Oh, you worked in a hotel. Bad hop, perhaps. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was the house physician. For three months, it says. Five, huh? <laughs> no, I took a job as a ship's doctor on the New York Bermuda run. Five voyages. Here, watch this, watch this here. What, uh, what place is this? Here? It's Valparaiso, Chile. I did a little hospital work down there. Again, for three months, huh? Uh -huh. I see you did much better in Goose Neck. It could Goose Liver, Wyoming, huh? <laughs> No, 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 that's Goose River, Wyoming, says that. Ah, uh, why would you? were there for an interminable period, for almost four months. My, my, my. Uh, well, I was a personal physician to a wealthy rancher, but he died. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, well, that couldn't have surprised the poor man. <laughs> oh, you know, I find this extremely painful. I was hoping to get a good man, a man who might perhaps stay on and assist me in the new hospital. But instead oh, of... Oh, well, I couldn't handle that anyway, Doctor. I'm leaving in a couple of months for Guatemala. That's fine, fine. Yeah, you wouldn't think of leaving any sooner, like, like right now, for instance. Oh, no, you've got nothing to worry about. I'm really quite capable. Well, listen, I wouldn't trust you with me dead dog. <laughs> I, uh, I find nothing to recommend you. Even, even your accent, the way you speak, it's disturbing to New England ears. Mm -hmm. Where did you acquire your Yankee accent, Doctor? <laughs> now, don't change the subject. I suppose you've got the agreement, the letter I signed. Well, of course. Uh, and you regard it as pointing. Well, naturally. Mrs. Gilly, show this gentleman to his room. Oh, Trudy's here, Doctor. She's brought her new sweater. Oh, my new sweater. Oh, fine, fine. Come in, Trudy. Come in, come in. Now, take off your jacket, Doctor, and we'll try it on. Ah, that's an elegant garment, Trudy. Just elegant. And so sweet of you to bring it over. Well, if it fits, I'll finish it up tonight. Oh, I, uh, I see the new doctor's here. Oh, I want to tell you about that young man. In words of one syllable, he's a complete incompetent. Really? A man's not a doctor. He's a hobo. Never, <laughs> never been in one place for more than three months. And, 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 and he's arrogant about oh, it. it. sounds dreadful. You'll just have to get somebody else. N no, I can't. I made an agreement on bound and honor. Besides, he has it in writing. Uh, dear, this will never do. Exactly. No, oh, and I'm talking about the sweater. Look at it. It comes halfway down to your knees. Ah, uh, no, since it's just grand. But it doesn't fit you at all. Uh, why don't you pay him off? Well, that's my precise intention, Tootie. But if I do, I can't get away for a vacation. Well, then it's out of the question. Oh, the sweater, it's off. Oh, no, it isn't awful at all. It, it, it's just roomy, you know. I, I'll let you have me sweaters roomy. May I come in? Well? Say, Doctor, did you notice if I left my... I... 
Oh, 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 that's nice. <laughs> that, that, that thing you're wearing. Oh, that's very attractive. What is it? What? <laughs> it's very obviously a sweater. But just one? No, he's right, Dr. McRory. It's hopeless. Miss Mason, Dr. Pearson. She's the school teacher. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you. Mm, how do you do? I'll talk to you later, Pearson. We're busy. I see. I'm being dismissed, huh? I should be brought up on charges of malpractice, Miss Mason. I, Dr. McCrory's fish. That'll be just about enough, young man. You see, Trudy? That's, that's what they call doctors nowadays. Excuse me. Dr. Pearson. Yes, Miss Mason. May I see you alone for a moment? Oh, I think that's an excellent idea. If, uh, if I seemed rude just now... Well, no, no not at all. Well, I didn't mean to be. I, uh, I understand you've done a lot of traveling. Uh, yes, considerable. Don't you think, Doctor, after all the things you've done, Fallbridge is going to be very dull? It's such a little town. Um, you don't like me, do you? Well, I, I hadn't thought much about it. Do most people? Like me? Oh, reasonable percentage. It's going to get awfully cold here soon. We have very severe winters here in Maine. Uh, well, there's a chill in the air right now. <laughs> what I mean is, well, well, I honestly think that Dr. McRory would release you if you wanted to leave. Really? Yes. Well, now, you know, that's very nice of you to take such an interest in me. Well, thank you, Miss Mason. I'll be sure to think it over. I still say it's downright nonsense, Dr. Pearson. You're going away so sudden like after just two days. Yeah, well, I did plan to stay a little longer, Mrs. Gilly, but I'm sure Dr. McCrory will be delighted to find I'm gone. <laughs> you old fool. Mm, who are you trying to kid? Right, the whole town will be pleased. Seems the word about me has got around. Two days. And that's the shortest run I've had anywhere. <laughs> hey, incidentally, I'll be on the wrong road. Seems to me we're clear out in the country. Yeah, I said I'd drive you to the bus depot, and I will. Only first, I'm taking you to see Doc McRory. And there he is, sitting beside that creek over there. What? Why, that old phony. I thought you said he was out on an urgent pneumonia case. Well, that's what he told me. Well, how'd you know he was out here? Fishing poles and boots don't cure pneumonia. Take your time, Doctor. The bus don't leave till four o'clock. Hey. Huh? Hey, how's Mrs. Hickey coming along? Huh? Mrs. Hickey's pneumonia. Oh, it's much better, much better. I'm glad to hear that. Young man, are you spoiling on me? I just came to tell you I was leaving. Ah, oh, you do. Know. Well, 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 that's right. Well, what you mean is not for a couple of weeks, sir. The next bus. Pearson, I'm an honest man. I'll not pretend I'm going to miss you. But it'll be greatly obliged if he'll stay on for a fortnight when I have a good doctor coming over from Augusta. Roy Chesley recommends him very highly. Uh, who's Roy Chesley? Who's Roy Chesley? Well, I'll tell you who he is. His father owns half the town. And Roy, well, Roy is president of the bank, Chamber of Commerce. He owns the town drugstore, and he's going to marry Trudy Mason. Uh -huh. That's who Ray Chesley is. Oh, and this doctor's a friend of Chesley? Yeah, Dr. Jens from Augusta. He'll come as soon as he can. I thought you told me you'd never hire a man again without seeing him first. Well, yes, yes, I did. But Jenks could be nothing but an improvement. Well, fine. Let's start the improvement right now. Yeah. Goodbye, Doctor. No, no, wait, no, no, wait, 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 wait. No. What for? Be reasonable. I want to start my vacation tomorrow. No, no. I know. I'm, I'm not asking you, you to handle that many difficult cases. If anything serious comes up before Dr. Jenks arrives, Dr. Wheaton will come over from Venterville. Nothing doing. The four o'clock buzz. Goodbye. Hey, look, look, I'll... I'll give you a cash bonus if you stay. Say, 20... Uh, say, $10. 10. Uh, you, you said 20. Did I? Uh, uh, well, uh, why don't we make it 15, huh? You forget it. The town doesn't like me, and I don't like the town. Say, uh, you catch any fish this morning? Now, what's more, you scared away every fish for miles around. We fish the properly. Young man, I've been fishing this sea for 35 oh, years. Oh, go on here. Look at this equipment you're using and the size of the float. I never fish with a float. I like to get the hook deep down into the fish's living room, down where the money is. <laughs> and get the line out like this, way out there where the ripples are. Hmm? There we are. Now, stand by for action. Well, that's very interesting, huh? Uh, you'll stay for a couple of weeks, eh? I told you, no. There, you see? You see how simple it is? Here, take the rod. Take over, quick. Look, you keep your Look at you. Look at the scene. You love it, you I've never seen such a beast in this well, scene. stop pulling. Give him the line. Let him play with get, it. Get out of my way. Get, give me some. You're going to pull it right out of his mouth. You're, no, anyone can get a boy for it. The real skill is bringing them in. And I happen to pride myself on a particular aptitude for that. <laughs> well, he got away. <laughs> Well, me too. So long, Doctor. Four o'clock bus, huh? 
Well, all right. All right. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make a bargain with you. Now, I don't think I can stay a fortnight, but I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah, yeah. I'll stick it out for a couple of weeks. The man... <laughs> the man's a lunatic. <laughs> What's that? I, I said I'm obliged, uh, Dr. Pearson. Very much obliged to you. Now, our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Welcome Stranger, starring Cary Grant as Jim, Barry Fitzgerald as Dr. McRory, and Pat Crowley as Trudy. <laughs> a couple of days have gone by. And while a stranger in town, Dr. Pearson is hardly any more welcome than before. Old Dr. McGlory at long last is ready to leave on his vacation. You haven't forgotten your ticket, I hope. You asked me that twice, Mrs. Gilly. It's in me wallet. Now, where the blue blazes is Pearson? I'll wait just two more minutes. Two minutes. Oh, the blood of skate. He knows I mean. Now, now, don't get yourself overheated. You haven't been feeling too well, you know. And how could I feel well? Are you still here? I thought you left long ago. And how could I leave without giving uh, without giving you me instructions? Oh, but you did. If anybody gets sick, I'm to send for a doctor. <laughs> exactly. Dr. Wheaton will come over for all, on all serious cases. And you'll remain here in Fallbridge until Dr. Jenks arrives. Roy Chesley's friend. Oh, oh, Dr. Jenks. Splendid. You'll see that Mrs. Sims takes the calcium tablets for a chill day. Calcium tablets, three times daily. Oh, and don't forget Mac Tucson's carbuncle. It's about ready for lancing. Check. And, oh, yes, you might drop in on Mrs. Crelly. Her baby's about you. Oh, you think I'm capable of delivering a baby? Frankly, no. But I, I, I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry about Mrs. Crelly. She's had ten. She, she'll tell you. She, she, she'll tell you what to do. Well... Goodbye, Mrs. Gilly. And I'll go with you in the taxi. You can drop me off the baby's day. Now, remember, Pearson, no surgery. No. You better take these. Now, what might they be? The train tickets. Oh, thank you to mind your own business. <laughs> I bid you goodbye. <laughs> Well, come in, come in. I'm sorry, but you just missed the old gentleman. Well, frankly, I dropped by to borrow an umbrella. It's starting to pour. Help yourself. Now, you're on your way to Roy Chesley's drugstore, I presume. Well, I happen to be on my way home. Good. You know, I can't make up my mind which Chesley I dislike more, Roy or his father. Oh? I guess Roy. He's a shade more obnoxious, wouldn't you say? Dr. Pearson, in case you're trying to be funny, Roy and I are engaged to be married. Oh, that's ridiculous. How can a girl like you... Dr. Pearson! Dr. Pearson, help! Uh, uh, well, what is it? What is Dr. it? Dr. McGlory! Uh, but after we dropped off Mrs. Gilly, we no more than turn the corner when he starts moaning and groaning and... Oh, my stomach. Pains in my stomach. <sighs> He looked over my taxi like he was kicked by a mule. Help me get him in the office. No, no, no. I, I can walk. I'll, I'll be fine, fine. What is it? I don't know. Can you wait around for a while? Yes, yes of course. Uh, call, call Dr. Wheaton. No. Oh, it's me appendix. It's me appendix. No, for the first time, you and I may be in complete agreement. Now, lie still and let me take a look. <laughs> and go, go away, somewhere, go away. Hey, just let me alone. Could you please keep that thermometer in your mouth? Yeah, what's, what's my blood count? Or is that too difficult for you to determine? <laughs> it's none of your business, but you've got appendicitis, all right. Uh, Temperature of 103. Oh, 30 years I waited for me vacation. 30 years. You know, that, that appendix will have to come out, and you know it. Dr. Pearson. Oh, come in, Trudy. Well, I just called Dr. Wheaton, but he's out on a confinement case. He's not expected back until late tonight. Well, see, we can't wait, Dr. McCrory. It's my appendix, and I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm a very sick man, Pearson, but my mind's clear. I just soon call in Sweeney the butcher. <laughs> now, let's start being sensible, shall we? I know you don't have any confidence in me, but there isn't any other choice. Your pulse is 108. Uh, to tell you, girl, there's a doctor Blodgett over there in Millbrook. But that's almost 100 miles, Dr. McRory, please. No, no. It's got to be done now. I warn you, if you operate, operate against me, will you go to prison for manslaughter? <laughs> Now, listen to me. You've had a lot more experience than I have. Now, what would you do with a patient as ornery and mean as you are? No, no, that's not a fair question. <laughs> oh, uh, Pearson, Pearson, uh, uh, have you ever operated before? Certainly I've operated. Trudy, you'll have to help me. What did you say? I'll need help. Uh, well, if I have to. Uh, Dr. Pearson? All right, I'm through this. Well, I've had a good full life. <laughs> Me fishing tackle goes to Maud Elkins, a true friend. 
Andy Weaver is to have me pipes in April. Doctor, for heaven's sake. Exactly. Now, write it down, write it down as I tell you. Well, I'm sorry, Doctor, but Miss Mason will have to postpone her legal work. I need a nurse. Me house goes to Mrs. Gilly. And me savings to you two at the end of the county orphans. Yes, sir, you're a witness. I'll go on. You'll be pole vaulting in three weeks. Even with a competent surgeon, 10% of peritonitis cases are lost. Well, you needn't worry. I've already lost my 10%. <laughs> What's, what's this stuff? Uh, ether? No, no, you don't. I want a local anesthetic. Can't you be reasonable? I'd like to give you a spinal if I had someone here to watch your blood pressure. I said a local. Oh, for goodness. How can you be so sick and so stubborn at the same time? Believe me, Pearson, you'd be grateful to me for my supervision and comments. So I've had a lot of experience. Well, I've had a little myself. A local, if you don't mind. Okay, a local. No, that's who do you see that mirror over there? Now put it on the stand so we can see what's going on. You want to what? The exact intentions. Now get on with it, Pearson. Shuffle me off to meet me maker. Don't tell me. Good morning. This is Chesley's drugstore. Yeah, we just come in to get out of the snow. Uh, how's old Doc this morning? Oh, he looks better than I do. He's fine. Folks been saying you saved his life, Doc. Yeah, sure did. Well, I had to. He owed me a week's salary. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Peterson. Well, my favorite nurse. Oh, hello, Chesley. What'll it be, Doc? Two dozen phenobarbital, half grain. Jed Conway's account. Conway? That's a hypertension case. Yeah, that's right. Uh. Oh, we have some potassium thiocyanide. I believe that's considered more modern. Would you be terribly offended, Chesley, if I insisted upon phenobarbital? Oh, just as you say, Doc. Thanks. Dr. McGlory had a good night, hmm? I spoke to Mrs. Gilly. Oh, he's doing very well. Hmm. Quite an experience for you, wasn't it? Well, you were wonderful. Well, thanks. So were you. Of course, Dr. Pearson knows that an appendectomy is probably the simplest of all operations. Why? Well, he's right, yes, a phenobarbital. Thanks. I, uh, I don't suppose you'd care to go along on the sleigh ride tonight, Doctor? Sleigh ride, huh? Oh, yes. Mrs. Gilly sold me a ticket. Oh, well, I imagine you're much too busy to go. That's huh? exactly what I told Mrs. Gilly. But I think I just might make that sleigh right after all. I'll see you both tonight, huh? Oh, now, really, must you be so rude? Who was being rude? All I said was... <laughs> Chesley's Pharmacy. Jenks, you all set? I sure will. In person at the Uptown Station. Hey, that's well. Eight o'clock tonight, right. <laughs> that was Dr. Jenks. He's coming in tonight. The new doctor? Uh-huh. If you're meeting him in Elktown tonight, won't we miss the sleigh ride? Oh, uh, you, uh, look, you, you go right ahead. I'll meet the sleigh in Bentonville at church supper, and we'll have the ride back home together, huh? Okay? Well, okay. I'll see you later, Roy. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chesley. Come in, come in. Thank you, Mrs. Gilly. Uh... How, how's the doc feeling tonight? Well, he won't tell me. He's too busy listening to the masked rider on the radio. <laughs> oh. yeah, that's a good sign. Mrs. Gilly, this is Dr. Jenks from Augusta. Oh, evening. It's a pleasure to know you, Mrs. Gilly. You'll uh, tell Dr. McCrory that we're here, please. Yeah, I'll see what I can do, Mr. Tesby. Mm -hmm. Have a chair. Uh, <clears throat> now, like I said, he's not young, and his methods aren't very modern. That's why I'm here. The more old-fashioned he is, the sooner I'll get to take over his practice. He says you can come right in. Thanks, Mrs. Gilly. Roy, ha-ha, you're just the fellow I want to see. Well, Doc, I want you to meet my old friend, Dr. Jenks. How are you, Doctor? Uh, satisfactory, thank you. Well, everything's set, Doc. <laughs> Jenks is moving into that little cottage, you know, that Dad owns across the street, and he's all ready to take over. Take over? Take over what? Why, your practice, Doctor, until you're able to... Uh... Young man, I hope you haven't ever far, because I have no opening for you. No opening? But, but you asked him to come here. Oh, no, no, you asked him. I'm very sorry, but I have a most excellent man with me now, and I see no reason for a change. Thank you. Oh, now, 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 no, wait a minute. You made it quite clear that you consider Pearson, just as I do, incompetent, irresponsible, and arrogant. Oh, no, no, you needn't distort the facts, Roy boy. Dr. Pearson is a man of ability, which I was the very first to recognize. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm surprised at you. I'm surprised at you. Oh, I guess there's nothing more to say. Oh, just one thing more. I thank you not to use me to get your friend's employment. And now, if you don't mind, I'll be taking me a rest. I don't want to be disturbed. I won't forget this, Doctor. No, see that you don't. Goodbye, James. <laughs> well, Mrs. Gilly, something disturbing you? Is Dr. Pearson really staying on? Oh, why shouldn't he? In a matter of two or three weeks as well, you know, the town of Farbridge is breaking ground for the most modern little hospital in the state of Maine. And you also know I'll be chief of staff. I'm about to name Dr. Pearson as my first assistant. Did he say he was staying? 
Now, Mrs. Gilly, I'm not a well man. All this chitter chatter is most disturbing. Now, just on me, no, no, turn on me radio, please, on your way out. May I come in? Here, yeah, come in, come in, come in. Well, you had a good time at the sleigh ride, right, huh? Yeah, it was quite an experience. Two years there. Yep. Without Roy Chesley. Uh-huh. Ah, there's a fine girl. A great pity she's thrown herself on, on, away on a lummox like Chesley. Don't you think so, huh? Yeah, he is a little on the stuffy side. Well, your pulse is good. And... Yeah, take Trudy home. Oh, as a matter of fact, she's here. She's phoning Roy. I was to meet her in Bentonville, but he didn't show up. Mrs. Gilly just mentioned that he stopped by with Dr. Jenks. Oh, that bladder skate. A most, a most in incompetent young man, and so rude. He, he went away. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know that I'm leaving here just as soon as you get well. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes, Mitchell. And, uh, yes, I have another doctor coming, yes. He'll be here any day now. Who? Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Gilroomy. <laughs> and what's his first name? What's that? And what's his first name? Oh, his first name? Oh, uh, uh Peter. Peter Michael Galooney, M.D. Oh, a very nice young man. But far from your equal, me boy. Well, naturally. Well, of course, if you change your mind, you know... No, that... no. Anyway, you'll be up and around in a week or so, back on the job as usual, all by yourself. Yes, I'll be myself. Ah, James, James, how those words describe me entire life. I'd like you to see something. This book. It's me old photograph album. I've been lying here looking at it and thinking and thinking and... Uh, hmm. Old pictures, huh? Yeah, look at this one. A lovely young lady, isn't she? Huh? Beautiful. Ah, I was very fond of her. So very fond. And she, of course, she was fond of me, too. Now what happened? Oh, you know, just a young doctor just starting out, not too bright. And while I was making up my mind, she married someone else. And now, I'm a lonely old man. Jim, don't make the mistake I made, or you'll be lonely, too. Trudy has a very high opinion of you. Yeah, well, I'm leaving the end of the week, and right now I'm taking your temperature. Oh, listen, oh, don't think for a minute that I was thinking that anything Close I said... Close your mouth, please. Uh, please. Uh, uh, please. Uh, maybe I won't want to... Close, say, please. Uh, 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 well, hello. How's our patient? Oh, no change. Health fine, disposition terrible. Dr. Pearson, telephone. Oh, excuse me. Anybody I know? No, I doubt it. Trudy, sit down. Yes, doctor? You know, it'll be a sad day for Farbridge when that young man leaves. Oh, great ability. And it's too bad that he... Well, uh... Well? Well, what's too bad? Oh, no, no, not, not for me to violate the confidence, Trudy. No, still... No, 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 I can't. <laughs> you know you're going to tell me, Doctor, so... All right, then, perhaps I should. Trudy, Dr. Pearson is most unhappy. Well, what about? About your engagement to Roy. <laughs> Did he say so? More than that. He says, you're, he says you're engaged to a stuffy young man. Oh? And that's why he's going away. He's not happy, Trudy. He's not happy. He doesn't show it, you know, but he... Well, the population of East Fallbridge is about to increase. And Mrs. Channock. Ah, Edie Channock. A fine, healthy girl. Her first, you know. Well, how do I get out there? Well, uh, if you if you go where, uh, well, uh, let's say, in, uh, I know you, you never find your way there. No, no, no. Not on these, not on these old at night. Yeah, I, 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 I'll drive you there myself, Jim. Hand me, hand me, hand me, me girl. Oh, there. you? Well, don't be ridiculous. Jim, that baby's waiting for us. Oh, no, lie down, Doctor. I'll take Dr. Pearson. I know where the house is. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Come on, we better hurry. And I brought your hot milk here. Ah, lovely pair they make, huh? Dr. McCrory, if I were you, I'd... Now, what on earth are you doing with my cousin Hattie's photograph? <laughs> And my album, my photograph album. Oh, when you see that, uh, well, it's right, it's right, it's right, there were old pictures and, uh, and, and old wine and... Uh, old Budinsky. Now drink your milk and go to sleep. Yes, and pleasant dreams to you too, Mrs. Gilly. <laughs> on Act Three of Welcome Stranger, starring Cary Grant as Jim, Barry Fitzgerald as Dr. McRory, and Pat Crowley as Trudy. Well, several hours have gone by. Mrs. Chanuck's had her baby, and Trudy and Dr. Pearson are on their way home. Oh, where are we? 
practically home. Hmm, I've been asleep. Uh, not long enough. A girl has to be at school in a few hours. Oh, you were, you were talking about, oh, about going away. Oh, yeah, well, just in two weeks or so, I'll be on a, on a boat again. Going where? Well, there's only one place to go this time of year. South. Jim, doesn't having a home mean anything to you? Sure, that's why I have so many. Huh. What happened? I say something funny? No, 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 no. Don't, don't you. Dr. McGrory. He said you were going away because you're heartbroken. Over what? Over me. You know, he'd do anything to have you stay on. <laughs> Cupid McCrory, huh? He told me you were a pretty fine fellow. Well, I'll say this for him. He couldn't have set a more attractive trap. Well, thank you. And thanks for bringing me home. Yeah. Hey, it looks like someone's waiting for you on the porch. Roy! Oh, my goodness. Well. Well, hello, Roy. You were going to meet me in half an hour. Some half hour. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Roy. I meant to phone you, but a woman in East Fallbridge had a baby, and I... Oh, and you had to be there, of course. Without your help, women in East Fallbridge couldn't have babies. Yeah, well, it's really my fault, Roy. I didn't know the roads, and Trudy said she'd... Oh, so now it's Trudy. Isn't that my name? You seem to forget that it's also going to be Chesley. Why, please, you'll wake the whole neighborhood. Maybe you'd like to forget we're engaged, huh? to talk like that. Yes, I would. That's just what I thought. Well, it's fine with me. Yeah. I'll give you two minutes to take that back. <laughs> Shouldn't mean that, you know. Uh, She'll be right back. Yeah, well, you better wait then. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, Roy. Not, look, don't think I'm worried. No, no. Well, you know, Trudy is far too smart to throw herself away on a hobo. Uh -huh. I, if I thought she'd be happy with you, you know, living in freight cars, I'd say, fine. <laughs> Thinking of her own good? Are you? No, no, I don't think I am. <clears throat> Are your intentions marriage? Well, frankly, Roy, that's something I've always tried to avoid. Now, you listen to me, Pearson. Oh, please go home. People are trying to sleep. Uh, oh, Trudy, look, I, I'm i sorry, but if you would just keep away from this, this quack here... Roy! Well, he isn't interested in marriage. He just told me so. Well, Roy's upset. It's a natural misunderstanding coming home so late and everything. Does that mean and everything? <laughs> Well, you needn't be alarmed, Doctor. Your freedom isn't in any danger whether I'm engaged or not. And I'm not, Roy. So good night. <laughs> I wasn't much of a help, was I? <laughs> I ought to punch you right on that. Oh! Forgive me for ducking. Well, good night, Roy. Next time, don't telegraph your punches. <laughs> well, 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 just in time for breakfast. Now, what happened last night? Six-pound boy. Everything's fine. Good, good. And that was Trudy. Uh, a trifle upset the last time I saw her. She and Roy broke their engagement. How they know? You don't say. <laughs> All right, Doctor. Don't you think you've done enough meddling? Meddling? A man tries to squeeze a little brains into that narrow, pig-headed skull of yours, and they call it meddling. In my opinion, the girl's too good for you. You talk too much. Eat your breakfast. Talk too much, do I? Oh, I was right about you in the first case. You have no manners. No manners at all. Well, Dr. Pearson, I'll have his ham and eggs in a minute. Come here, please, Mrs. Gilly. Come here. You will inform Dr. Pearson that I'm no longer speaking to him and that I have no interest at all in what he has to say about ham and eggs or anything else. Oh, no. Now, look, if I really have been... I, I, I'd, much rather, I'd much rather he didn't speak to me either. Um, Mrs. Gilly, will you remind Dr. McCrory that I agreed to remain here until he's able to resume his practice and I'll keep my word? He's informed Dr. Pearson that he'll not get one penny salary after today. Oh, tell him yourself. I'm busy frying eggs. Oh, come in, come in. Just passing by, Mrs. Gilly. Thought I might as well drop off your groceries. And just had him down that, thanks. Uh, that's you, Doc. How are you feeling? Hold him up about considering who the surgeon was. <laughs> I see you got a new neighbor across the street, Dr. Jinks. Jinx? Jinx? Who? Who'd you say? Dr. Jinks. Roy's friend. Moved in last night, Doc. Ah, just visiting night, no doubt. Oh, looks like a long visit, Doc. He's putting up a shingle right now. Boy, the man's an idiot. Oh, he'll never last. No one's going to take your place in this town. Well, other doctors will come, come here lasted a month at the longest. Yes, well, this fellow won't last three weeks. Three weeks, you think, huh? You still mad at me? Uh, now, whatever gave you such a silly impression? <laughs> sit down, sit down, finish your breakfast. Jim, when are you going to be leaving here? Uh, how Saturday afternoon? You think you'll be strong enough by then? I'm strong enough right now. Jim, there's a meeting Saturday noon. I'd like you to come along. Meeting? Yeah, the board of directors of the new hospital. As you know, I'm to have complete charge of the place as soon as it's finished. Well, thanks. I'd like very much to attend, Dr. McCrory. Make close friends. Call me Joe. <laughs> Oh, 
And once right. more, gentlemen, we have now raised every last dime we need to complete the new hospital. Right. Now, Dr. McCorry, on behalf of the hospital board, I want you to know how much we appreciate your long and devoted service to our community. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Thank you. We know how close the new hospital is to your heart. <laughs> it is, it is. Well, it's close to our hearts, too. Therefore, we feel that a, a doctor with more modern methods, new ideas... What's, what's that? Doc, times have changed. You mean you don't want me to run the hospital? Well, we feel that a younger man like Dr. Jenks... Uh, well, we haven't exactly voted yet, Doc, but... Uh, we... dear, excuse me, I, I believe in. Come around, Jim. No, Joe, uh, wait. Mr. Chesley, may I say something? You a member of this board, Pearson? If I were, I'd be ashamed to admit it. Now, it seems to me there's some pretty short memories around here. Dr. McCrory's guarded the health of this town for 35 years. He knows more about medicine than Dr. Jinx, Jinx or whatever his name is, and I will ever get out of books. Now, listen, Pearson, you know, there are new methods, new discoveries. Yes, you're right, Roy, but no one has discovered a substitute for skill or wisdom or for practical experience or goodness of heart. Well, no, it isn't that we don't think highly of Doc. Besides, there's nothing really definite. We got a vote on it. Now, no, hold on there, boys. We all decided to... I, look, excuse me, Dad, but if... Dr. McCrory is the better man. There is a way to find out. A written examination conducted by the Medical Society. That suits you, Dr. Jenks? Oh, of course. That seems more than fair to me. Well, surely Dr. McCrory couldn't object to a written examination now, could he? Of course he could. I shouldn't have to remind any of you that Dr. McCrory hasn't written an examination paper in almost 40 years. Now, nobody's knocking the old doc, but we want to do the progressive thing. And I think the examination idea is real progressive. All in favor, say aye. 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 No. Six to two. It's carried. Let's go again. Joe, uh, that examination, now, don't you think you'd better start... No, 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 I don't. Ah, uh, I've been here too long. A man, it's a fool to bury himself in one little corner of the world. Well, you wouldn't have too much trouble with it, really. At my age? Jim, would you believe it? I'm past 60. No. I never would have guessed it. You wouldn't, huh? Never. Well, then, what do you think of that, huh? Joe, uh, would you like me to stay here a while, just sort of hang around? No, thanks. I'll soon be going myself. Why not even get me a job on one of those ships like you do? Well, it's about time for your boss. Yeah. You wouldn't like to wait around, would you? See me off? No, no, I, do, I don't think so. I think I'll walk on home. It's a fine day. Well, Dr. Pearson, it's been a pleasure knowing you. Now, that goes for me, too, Joe. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good afternoon, Doctor. Waiting for the bus, hmm? I, uh, I was just about to call you to say goodbye, Trudy. Oh, but goodbyes aren't pleasant. And you generally manage to avoid things that aren't pleasant. That's right, whenever I can. Well, it's wonderful having a little world all of your own, isn't it? If your friends have problems, that's their misfortune. You just get on a little boat and your whole world is snug and cozy again. No, no, no. Wait a minute, teacher. Have you any idea what that hospital means to Dr. McRory? Have you the vaguest notion what losing it is going to do to him? Now, aren't you confusing me with the Chesleys? I didn't take that job away from Joe McCrory, and my staying here won't give it back to him. And you could help him prepare for that examination. Well, he'd never take that examination. Not with his pride. Pride? A hospital is the dream of his life, and you talk about pride. If you urged him to take it, he'd take it. And if you coached him, he'd pass. But no, no, it's much more pleasant than Guatemala. Well, here's your bus. Have fun, Doctor. It's been nice knowing you. What do you mean you're going to work on a boat, a man of your age? <laughs> will, you be, will you be good enough to pack me things, Mrs. Gilly? <laughs> oh, you're an impossible old fool. What things? Everything. Everything? You mean, why, Doc, I, I wouldn't know where to begin. Neither would I. That's why I, uh, what, Jim? You missed the bus. We'll talk about that later. All right, Joe, come on, let's get into your office. Take off your coat and put on your glasses. We're going to go to work. What the devil are you talking about? Now, you want that hospital, don't you? Well, we've got ten days to bone up for the examination. All right, let's get started. Now, list the symptoms, etiology, treatment, and complications of my... Roy 
Chesley. Where's Dr. Jenks? Oh, he's around here somewhere, Roy. He's just finished the examination. Oh, Dr. McCrory is taking a little more time, but if you care to place a small wager on who's going to win, I'll now, look, be delighted. Look, Pearson, this is serious. You tell Jenks to get over to the schoolhouse right away. Four boys have just been taken deathly ill. You get Jenks over here. Jenks, is it anything serious? Eddie here is my nephew. He's Lucy's boy. Well, four boys sick at one time. Uh, food poisoning's been ruled out, but I don't like those dizzy headaches. Uh, have the youngsters been out of school lately, Miss Mason? Well, George here was absent yesterday. His horse died. Horse died? What from? Well, they didn't know. And these marks on his arm. Hmm. Mosquito bites. Mosquito bites? What's that mean, Doc? Yeah, well, what's, what, what, what is that? What, what, what's going on right Hello, Trudy. These boys in your class? Well, yes, yes. I, I've sent all the other pupils home. Oh, thanks, Pearson, but we don't need any help. It's a fairly obvious case. Is it? Hello, boys. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Oh, there. You see? They can't even talk. They just lie there, all green and sick and moaning. And, Dr. Uh, Jinx... It's what? not a common disease, Dr. McCrory. I don't believe you'd know about it. But if I'm not mistaken, these four boys have contracted the equine encephalitis. Oh, no! What is it? Oh, mosquitoes carry the virus. Chickens harbor it. The disease is more common among horses. Oh, now, wait. You're not being a little hasty, are you, Dr. James? If not wasting time is being hasty, yes. Yeah, Doctor, how, how, how serious is it? Well, there was an outbreak in Massachusetts in 1938, and believe me, it was very serious. Uh, equine, uh, what do you call it? Oh, call it virus brain fever. Uh, Roy, call Bentonville. Tell them to get the ambulances here right away. We've got to isolate these boys immediately. As for the other children, well, everyone has got to be inoculated. Now, I'm going to telephone Chicago. They've got a serum there. And if we can get the army to fly it here in time. Jim, uh, Jim. Well, I hate to tell uh, you. Uh, come with me. I want to show you something. Jim, well, you don't suppose do Jenks could be right, Joe? Well, well, he could be right. But to me, well, I've got another theory. I want to show you something here in the washroom. Those four boys have been poisoned, Jim. Poisoned? But how could they? Well, take a look. <coughs> four cigar butts. <laughs> Nicotine poisoning, wouldn't you say, huh? Come on, come on, we better tell. We all need vaccine for everybody in town. I've got Chicago Hospital on the phone. Let me talk to him. Dr. Jane, say, if I might make, make a suggestion... Uh, not now. Uh, find out how soon they can get it here, Mr. Uh, 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 Dr. Jenks' case, Joe. But Customary I'm, ethics. I'm trying to tell him that he's got nothing to worry about. Well, that's very easy. Hey. At least the vaccine will keep the disease from spreading. Yeah. Well, if it isn't being too unethical, Dr. Jenks, I suggest you forget that vaccine. Dr. McCrory has a much simpler specific. Well, well my own private prescription is the back of a hairbrush vigorously applied to the seat of the pants. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? It's the best cure I know for 12-year-olds who've been smoking cigars. The evidence is in the washroom. <laughs> oh, they must have heard what you said, Joe. Look at those kids scoot out of here. Hey, you boys, come back here. Come back here at once. Hang up, Dad. Just tell Chicago we made a slight mistake. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Chesley. Now, if you only let me explain... Get I, away I, from I, me, I, you, you! Everything's all right, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing wrong with your children. You can all go home now. Oh, oh Miss Mason. Hey, teach. Yes? Oh, I'm surprised at you. You shouldn't permit your students to smoke cigars. Well, I guess I shouldn't. Oh, you're just going to have to be a little more careful with our kids. Oh, don't be so smart. Oh, here now, hold on, wait a minute. Uh, and Joe, uh, Joe, about the hospital, it's yours. I don't want the hospital, Jesse. Yeah, but Joe... For 35 years, I've been thinking about Farbridge. Now I'm going to think about myself. As for those examinations, uh, forget them. I know the hospital's a big job for a man in my advanced years. Unless, unless, of course, Dr. Pearson stays on to assist me. Sorry, Doctor, my plans are made. Unless, of course, Miss Mason were to... Oh, I think it could be arranged. Yes, as I was saying, Mr. Chesley, I think it could be arranged. In a moment, our stars will return. And our thanks for a delightful evening to Cary Grant, Barry Fitzgerald, and Pat Crowley. And may the good fairies go with you all along the way. Oh, what's the play for next week, Irving? I'm happy to say that again we have a wonderful trio. A trio of stars, two handsome gentlemen and a lovely lady. We will present them in a suspenseful drama from Warner Brothers. The Unforgettable Strangers on a Train... The stars, that excellent actor, Robert Cummings, gorgeous Virginia Mayo, and one of our finest artists, Dana Andrews. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
And you're always welcome. Tonight, where Ruth Kerr as Mrs. Gilly, Lamont Johnson as Roy, Joseph Kearns as Dr. Jenks, Herb Butterfield as Mr. Chesley, and Gain Whitman, Roy Glenn, Bill Johnstone, Dick Ryan, and Eddie Marr. The Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Hollywood Radio Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Broadcast from uh, April 5th of 1954 of Welcome Stranger on the Lux Radio Theater called for uh, Armed Forces uh, Radio and TV Service listeners, the Hollywood Radio Theater. And uh, Ken Carpenter even uh, recorded a uh, special uh, closing for it to say the Hollywood Radio Theater and that sort of thing. This was uh, 1954. Uh, the... Uh, servicemen and women around the world were uh, being more and more introduced to um, television by way of Armed Forces Radio. And what they would do, they'd do the same thing that they did with radio. You'd get the the big uh, TV shows. They'd edit